good morning to everybody <laughs> yeah meeting after almost uh, three or four weeks um, uh, i would like to uh, continue with our discussion on world religions initially we had uh, two sessions we uh, discussed the different aspects of uh, world religions uh, what i would like to do today is uh, to uh, complete uh, that discussion and then uh, we will uh, move uh, forward now we started with briefly to uh, <clears throat> refresh your memory uh, religion what is religion religion usually includes the following a system of belief uh, let me go to the beginning uh, we looked at uh, from very beginning etymology religion comes from latin word religio which means obligation bond and reverence and then we looked at some definitions of religion starting from oxford concise dictionary which says that the belief in a superhuman controlling power especially in a personal god or gods entitles to obedience and worship so obedience and worship uh, two uh, key terms here Uh, believing in a god to whom we must be obedient and also we must worship and uh, george galloway's uh, definition uh, somewhat going in the same line man's faith in the power beyond himself power beyond himself so you know believing in a power which is much larger than yourself whereby he seeks to satisfy emotional needs and the gain stability of life and which he expresses in acts of worship and service again worship and service so uh, three characteristics you are believing in something higher than yourself and then you need uh, emotional satisfy your emotional needs protection and stability of life and you express it in worship and uh, service to that god and then uh, Rudolf Otto's uh, definition mysterium tremendum numinous dread non rational as the key characteristic of religion and then sigmund freud uh, psychoanalytic investigation of the unconscious mental life reveals that religious beliefs correspond closely with the fantasies of infantile life mainly unconscious ones concerning the sexual life of one's parents and the conflict that gives rise to so freudian uh, definition is considered to be a uh, kind of dismissive of religion uh, in a way it tries to explain how people uh, get into religious beliefs which is according to um, uh, you know sigmund freud um, something related to your uh, early childhood life and your frustrations and curi- curiosities about your parents and their sexual life so you know deep psychological thing why people are attracted to religion now uh, so sigmund freud's definition of religion is uh, what we call uh, reductionist it it reduces the uh, religious aspect to something psychological and then karl marx religion is the side of the oppressed creature heart of the heartless world just as it is the spirit of the spirit the situation it is the opium of the masses now this definition is very famous uh, when we refer to karl marx everybody uh, talks about it so karl marx looks at religion from a point of view of class struggle so it is a historical social thing uh, in in the society which was uh, used by religious people in order to oppress others uh, then we discuss is buddhism religion uh, so that is more you know the things we know uh, and then a religion usually includes the following uh, system of belief doctrines and teachings set of practices and rites and rituals an organization with hierarchical structure of clergy sacred text and objects now you know this uh, the 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 four categories are very important when we use the word religion of course that word does not have one meaning 
it, it, uh, we, we use the word uh, to refer to uh, many different meanings, but basically it involves a system of beliefs, what we believe. Now, uh, the, we may be believing in gods, we may be believing in past life, we may be believing in uh, heaven and hell, you know, all kinds of things the people believe. People believe to, people believe to, uh, uh, to be existing uh, in, uh, in this world or in next world or, you know, in somewhere in the universe. So, system of beliefs. And then, uh, uh, religion has doctrines and teachings. Now, when you look at um, uh, developed religion, particularly like Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Judaism, Christianity, uh, all these religions have a set of doctrines. In Buddhism, we know that we have uh, Satta, Tinsati, Bodhipakya, Dhamma, Four Noble Truths and you know, so on, Satipatthana. So in a whole doctrine, and then you take Christianity, there are dogmas, what they call, you know, the basic beliefs. So uh, doctrines and teachings, doctrinal aspects, the God, nature of God, and you know, things like that. And then the third is the set of practices, rites, and rituals. When you take a religion, it also involves a set of practices, things we do, rites, rituals. Like, you know, in any religious society, you see these things, you know, festivals, uh, religious occasions, where the clergy get together, monks get together and do things, you know, where the ordinary people get together and do things. Was in, uh, in Buddhism, in Myanmar, you can see was was so observed and things like that. And then fourthly, an organization with hierarchical structure of clergy and also religion means an organization. So why this uh, is very important? Because uh, when we use this word religion, uh, we need to be clear in what sense we are using this. Okay? Because um, uh, religion... Uh, can mean many different things in different contexts. So in other words, the word refers to a, some very complex organization in the world. Okay, So therefore it is very important to see in, in what sense we use the term. Now, uh, if you refer to Buddhism, say the term Buddhism, Actually, uh, the term Buddhism will have all these things, you see. So, any, any religion, any, any religion in the developed sense, you can have these four things. So, now, we refer to, um, uh, say, something we know uh, better. So, Buddhism can mean a uh, set of beliefs. And also Buddhism can be, be doctrines and also uh, rites and rituals and also organization. Now, um, when we use these terms, you know, uh, depending on any context, we have to be very clear. Now, when we are talking about Buddhism, uh, we sometimes use um, uh, to the teaching. So the Buddhism can mean teaching. But Buddhism can also mean the system. Uh, we believe that um, uh, in the history, uh, two arahants called Sona and Uttara brought Buddhism to Suvarnabhumi. But what does it mean? Bringing Buddhism to a country means what? You know, it's, it's very interesting, the Sona Uttara. Or for example, in Sri Lanka, we believe that Venerable Arahant Mahinda brought Buddhism to Sri Lanka. Now, you know, what, what did he bring? They, he, he just came with, with a group of monks. But, you know, they established the sasana, organization, right? They established Mahasima. Now, Sima is for the monastic Vinay activities. And then he teaches the Dhamma to people, so the doctrine. And then he uh, uh, entered... Um, candidates to the Sangha. So Sri Lankans became monks. Now you see all these things happening under one. So when we say 
Buddhism was brought to Sri Lanka by Venerable Mahind, or Buddhism was brought to Swanabhumi by uh, Sona and Nuttara. Actually, we 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 making a very complex uh, statement by saying that. So, in that word, we say that he brought many things. So, Dhamma is one, and then Dhamma. In those days, of course, um, there were no books. Dhamma was inside the head, memory. So, you know, they came with the memory. And then that memory was imparted to um, others who learned them, who memorized them. So, from generation to generation, Dhamma continued. So, you can see that when we say religion in general, or when we say any particular religion, you can see that we are using uh, the several different um, meanings in this term. So Buddhism, we can, we can see all these four aspects. In Christianity or in Islam or any religion, you can see all these aspects. So um, in that sense, a religion usually includes these things. And then I also explained to you a sacred and profane in religion and also esotericism and exoterism in religion. Now, um, uh, sacred and profane uh, in religion again has this idea. Uh, in some religions, uh, this idea is very clearly seen, some others not. But, you know, we have sacred objects. Now, again, sacred things, we have the concept of profane. Profane means not sacred. So what is not religious is considered to be profane. So, you know, this category is basically associated with, uh, uh, with religion. So as a result, so say in Buddhism, we have sacred places, sacred objects. When you have uh, arahant or when you believe in, you know, some great monk, when he passed away, uh, we, we collect the things, you know, he used in the room. Why? Because we consider these things sacred. And then there are um, uh, places which are considered to be sacred. There are objects which are considered to be sacred. Now in the Buddhist tradition we have uh, dhatu. We like, you know, the tooth relic, relics. In Sri Lanka we believe that, you know, the Buddha's tooth relic is in uh, Sri Lanka. So, you know, the many hundreds, thousands of people uh, go there in order to worship that object, relic, something you consider to be. And then the hair relics of the Buddha, tooth relic of the Buddha, like that. Now in the Christian tradition, or many other traditions also, they have that. Saints, when the saints, are pa saints passed away, they keep the bodies and, you know, they consider it as sacred. In this country also, you know, that there are uh, bodies of, you know, the monks who passed away. Uh, I remember um, somewhere in Shan State, I was taken to a monastery where there is a body of a monk who passed away 14 years ago. So, you know, still the body is there, you know, people go and pay respect. So, you know, like that, sacred and profane. So, again, sacred, you have profane, but it's not considered to be sacred. And esoterism and exoterism. It's another category which we use in order to understand religion. Uh, certain things are internal. Certain things are external. You know, that type of... In different religions, again, you have these things in a different manner. Now, for example, when Buddhist monks are performing uh, Vinaya Kham, uh, Samaneras or lay people are not allowed, right? So that is, uh, in a way, uh, esotericism, something uh, internal, because you don't do it in public. So uh, there are places in the uh, monasteries and the religious places where ordinary people can't go. Only the clergy, priest can go. So, you know, th these ideas are there. And also, exoterism means there are certain aspects that um, everybody can see. 
like you know in the in the in the wasser if you take uh, wasser observa observance you have both uh, esoteric and exoteric aspect in the wasser observance there are certain things only the monks do right no lay people take part in that no even sabadeeras take part in that but then on the other hand in the wasser there are certain things lay people do they come and they celebrate they bring offerings all these things so within the same act you can have certain things internal certain things external uh, so esotericism and uh, exoterism so uh, up to this point we discussed today i would like to discuss with you uh, types of religion and also i would like to discuss a uh, little bit uh, the you know origin of religion so these are the two things i would like to cover with you uh, today so um, basically when you look at the types of religion there are different uh, types different uh, ways of categorizing or classifying religion that is what we mean by uh, uh, types of religion now um, in fact uh, when we uh, study religion uh religion has been studied from many different points of view uh religion can be studied from a religious point of view but academically religion has been uh, uh, studied from anthropological and sociological point of view in fact starting from early 19th century uh, there are a lot of um, Uh, european i mean western scholars who have studied uh, you know religion very deeply actually uh, this book i just picked up from the library here uh, if you glance this at this book uh, you know it has uh, essays from people like e b tyler james fraser sigmund freud Emil Durkheim, Karl Marx, William James, Rudolf Otto, Max Weber, Mircea Eliade, Ivan Pritchard and Clifford uh, Geertz. Actually all these names are very well known names in western study of religion. Now most of these scholars EB Tyler is one of the very early people he he lived in um, like uh, early 19th century and then uh, of course uh, uh, william james and R rudolf otto max weber they belong to also the, the 20th century but uh, these are classical uh, scholars who studied religion from anthropological and sociological point of view now Uh, when they went into different uh, countries you know this going to different countries happen um, as a result of um, development of transport and then uh, better ships were built by these people you know from the colonial history starting from the 16th century uh, spanish people portuguese people you know they had uh, you know much better uh, navigating systems and then subsequently other countries like england germany france you know all these people so they went around the world and they conquered they colonized certain parts of the world so the scholars and the people from these countries went all over the world okay now that history is you know some modern history you will, you have to know a little bit okay now how you know the the people went in uh, different places now for example british came to burma right and then the uh, 19th century and then they colonized burma but then as a result also you know british um, uh, you know influence of british uh, to buddhism buddhist studies is you know something very important and um, british came to sri lanka and uh, the person called reese davids studied pali in sri lanka 
and then he went and started Polytech Society, which exists even up to today. So you can see colon, colon, you know, creating colonies, colonization, and resulted in both good and bad things. Now, actually, we can say it is uh, so the colonial uh, rulers, people who came to colonial uh, rule that took Buddhism back to uh, England and to the Europe. So, you know, it's a kind of mixed story. It doesn't mean that colonialism is good. But on the other hand, uh, the, the, some colonialists like British were uh, more prone to academic and, you know, the cultural things like, than maybe perhaps uh, Portuguese or um, Spanish or, any, you know. So uh, the Buddhism went into Europe as a result of that. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you know, this is a very um, interesting story. When these uh, colonial people went into different countries, and then when they went into these countries, they found that, you know, every country has a religion. Every society has some kind of religion. So they were fascinated by that. You know, first they thought that, you know, they, of course they thought that Christianity and their religion is the best. But, you know, when they went into outside world, sometime, you know, they, they, they discovered that every society has religion and also some societies have even very advanced religions. Okay. So uh, th that is as a result of, you know, this traveling, going into these countries. Now, for example, uh, this man, uh, E.B. Uh, Tyler. Uh, you know, Tyler went into these countries as, a, uh, you know, the, the traveler. But then subsequently what he saw in these countries, particularly religion, you know, he tried to study. So subsequently, anthropological, ethnological, sociological. So this ethnology, anthropology are kind of used almost synonymously, and also sociological studies. How primitive societies had religion, what type of religion they had. You know, they studied these things and then recorded. So uh, if we want to study religion as uh, uh, deep subject. Actually, you know, this is a, a very good uh, reading for you to read. But uh, in, in this uh, class, of course, I will be referring to some of these authors. Mm, I already referred to uh, Karl Marx and also Sigmund Freud in my definition of uh, religion. So there are whole uh, other groups of, um, uh, so if you want to know the main and key people who have studied religion, you know, you can look at uh, this kind of anthology and uh, understand. So interesting thing is when these people went into these different countries, they found uh, uh, religion in every society, some kind of belief, some type of worship, some type of uh, beliefs about the afterlife, some type of beliefs about the uh, supernatural beings, gods, and you know. So then that is how these scholars started thinking, you know, religion can have some commonalities. Religion can have some common characteristics. Because the phenomenon you find in every society. And also it was very interesting thing, how come that every society has a religion? You know, some sort of religion. Maybe, maybe there are some societies uh, where they don't have religions. But, you know, basically, usually, um, every society in the world has, you know, some sort of uh, belief. Some sort of beliefs about things that they don't know. Things that they don't understand. So by looking at all these things, scholars try to characterize religion. Some common characteristics. Okay. Everywhere in the world, religion has these characteristics. You know, that is what they thought. Okay. Now, uh, I mean, I'm just trying to tell you how this study of religion began and then how they really looked at uh, um, various religions, through various religions, religion as a common phenomenon. 
with common characteristics. Okay. Of course, that's a very long story. And then uh, some people, for example, concluded that uh, all the religions have some kind of supernatural belief in supernatural thing. Now, most of these people, scholars who went, all these names are uh, from Christian tradition. They have their own concept of God. So then from the biblical point of view, from Christian point of view, they looked at um, you know, other religions. So they naturally thought that you know, the Christianity is the uh, most developed and best religion, and the, 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 the other religions are not that developed. And interestingly, uh, they were puzzled when they encountered religions like Buddhism, <coughs> Jainism, where, you know, there is no belief in God. First, they thought that every religion believe, believe, believes in God. But uh, then they found that there are very widespread religions like Buddhism without concept of God, I mean, without belief in God. There is a concept of God and you know, there, there are certain uh, comments and criticisms about uh, the concept of God. But Buddhism itself doesn't have a concept of God, believing, belief in, in God. And Jainism is the same. And even in Indian religion, you know, there are certain um, aspects that doesn't believe in God. So, uh, you know, this, this very interesting thing. Uh, initially, the scholars uh, mm, came to believe that, um, uh, of course, one thing is that almost every society has a religion. And then almost every society has a religion believing in something supernatural. Okay. Almost every society has a religion that believes in uh, concept of God. So that way, gradually, you can see that those who studied religion... They, they started characterizing religion, attributing certain common characteristics to uh, religion. Now, basically, when we look at these types of religion, the one very important thing is theistic and non-theistic religions. Now, theistic and non-theistic religion, theo means um, the God, idea of God, theistic and non-theistic religion. Now, in many societies, when you look at religion, you have um, belief in God. But then on the other hand, there are religions without belief in God. Now, if you look at uh, the more uh, developed religion, in the developed religion, we have uh, in the... The European religion. Of course, uh, time-wise, uh, uh, Hinduism comes. Uh, Hinduism, okay. And then we have uh, Buddhism. Advaita Vedanta. Of course, in here you have also uh, Sikhism and then uh, Taoism. Confucianism.
Now, roughly, we can uh, uh, classify religion into two groups uh, in this manner. But uh, here we are talking about uh, more developed, uh, presently existing religions, of course, some of which uh, started very long time ago, but they still continue to uh, exist. So this is um, basically uh, uh, how we look at theistic and non-theistic religions. However, um, the sociologist, anthropologist, and ethnologist uh, who went into different countries, you know, in the early 19th century up to very recent time, they were really looking at not these developed religions. They were looking at religious beliefs of the primitive people or the primitive societies. For example, even today sometimes you see in um, uh, Facebook or news that, you know, people uh, discovering some tribes in Amazon who have not been identified before. So in the world, there can be still some groups of people who never come into the modern uh, civilization. You know, they are, they are just um, living in their own worlds. Uh, not very far from here in the Indian Ocean, you know, there are certain islands, you know, they never allow anybody to go there. Even very recently you saw that uh, American uh, young man was killed because, you know, of course nobody is supposed to go there. If anybody goes, they will shoot by arrows. I mean, they are very primitive, but they never allow anybody to come there. You know, but that type of societies still exist. Now, when you go to that type of society, if you examine, maybe you can find certain religious beliefs. Certain beliefs, you know, they, they have about afterlife, about the, about the uh, dead um, people, and so on. So, you know, these are the kind of things the anthropologist and, um, it, you know, the, the sociologist uh, discovered in these uh, countries. Now, here we are dealing with more developed religion that uh, exists in today. But even these religions, some of these are very, very uh, ancient uh, and, uh, you know, going to the uh, long past, uh, you know, the, in, the, in, the, in the history. So, but anyhow, um, we, we can basically look at theistic and non-theistic religions uh, from this point of view. But in the, the ancient primitive societies, uh, maybe they had some belief in spirits, dead people. But, you know, the concept of developed concept of God is, you know, something new. I will uh, come to that point uh, shortly. So when we look at basically types of religion, theistic and non-theistic religions is something very interesting. Now initially we have, um, in India we have um, Hinduism, China we have uh, Taoism, and then in the, in the Western civilization we have Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Sikhism is, you know, something started in uh, India alone with Hinduism and, uh, you know, the, the combining certain things from Islam and, you know, combining certain things from uh, uh, Hindu beliefs. And then Baha'ism and, you know, there can be many more new religions. And um, now the main idea here is religions are classified based on the concept of God. Now, when we use the word God here, you have to be, uh, you have to keep in mind that we are referring to God in the G capital God, okay? So the God in that sense is not really the <coughs> gods we are believing in uh, um, Buddhism, right? But we believe in many different gods. We transfer merits to gods. But no, that's a somewhat different thing. But here, when you say theistic religion, what is meant is basically, uh, you know, the God in, uh, you know, this sense. Uh, in the Buddhist uh, text, this concept is described in terms uh, 
ഇസ്സറോ ഖത്ത നിമ്മാത്ത ഓക്കെ ഇസ്സറോ ദീസ് ആർ ദ പാലി ടേംസ് ദാറ്റ് ആർ ബീങ് യൂസ് ഇസ്സറോ ഖത്ത നിമ്മാത്ത ഖത്ത ഓത്ത് ദുവ നിമ്മാത്ത ക്രിയേറ്റർ ഇസ്സറോ ലോഡ് സോ യുനോ ദീസ് ആർ ദ കാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ഇസ്സറോ ഖത്ത നിമ്മാത്ത നൗ ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദ ടൈം ഓഫ് ദ ബുദ്ധ ബ്രഹ്മിൻസ് ബിലീവ് ദാറ്റ് ബട്ട് ബുദ്ധ റിജക്റ്റഡ് ഇറ്റ് ജൈനിസം റിജക്റ്റഡ് ഇറ്റ് but nevertheless the concept of god as isaro katta nimmata was there we are talking about 6th century bce like you know the 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 7678910 centuries before christianity uh, arose but then subsequently you can also see similar idea was developed in judaism judaism also goes maybe uh, thousand years before the before christ so it's also very old so the judaism and also um, uh, hinduism uh, in that sense are very old now this word hinduism is actually a modern word okay hinduism is a word modern word uh, that word uh, belongs to um, uh, actually it was coined by british so it is uh, from the 19th century before 19th century there was no something called hinduism okay then what was there what was during the time of the buddha you know we t- we say when we talk about buddha was a hindu or you know but of course historically we have to remember that there is no one such thing called hinduism it is something that was created by the british now again you can see something very important and interesting here now before british came there are only very few occasions when the when complete india was under one uh, rule actually there was I, to my knowledge there was no one single location when the entire india was you know but then again what is india it again depends on uh, you know the each uh, maybe king now we know that the, for the first time the largest kingdom was created by king ashoka right so we say what ashoka created this india but then in that india what we call pakistan today also belonged in india but today we don't call it india we call it pakistan and what we call nepal was also india you can see that very concept of a country india also changes from time to time right so if you look at the world history this is the nature of many countries where you know the 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 what for example germany means what poland means what france means in europe changes from time to time usually this does not happen to small countries like sri lanka which is island so you know island is always limited by you know you can't uh, add anything so uh, <coughs> <coughs> yeah, so in an island it doesn't happen but uh, so you know so the the now british came and british conquered the whole thing and then they called it india so before that they had the idea called bharata varsha but bharata varsha was smaller than the british india really in the sense so and then religion also is interesting because uh, there was no uh, need or occasion for people to think about uh, religion that is you know the the pervading the entire country so that is also a modern concept because you know you can see that you know the now today what we call india is a huge country but that huge country is connected with uh, telephones tv and all these things so you know it is kind of becomes one unit 
But before that, there was no such thing. So within India, there was no concept of one religion, actually. There were many different gods. So you can see it is very interesting to see that uh, the concept of Hinduism is something put on by uh, uh, British people. Now, the, we can say the same thing about the concept of Buddhism also. Buddhism is English term. But, so when, we, when the British, you know, the English ter term came, uh, Buddhism, of course, it again comes as an umbrella term which covers all aspects of Buddhism. But in, the, in, in case of Buddhism, we know that the concept of Buddhist world is different. Now, if you take the Theravada, concept of Theravada, now, from very early period, Theravada the Buddhist world included Sri Lanka and then Southeast Asia, namely Burma, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and you know those regions, and then Sri Lanka. So Theravada, you know, that particular aspect of religion created one, and then Vajrayana uh, in the hilly areas, and then Mahayana in the East Asia. So you, you see that although uh, there was no one single term, but there were three different traditions very clearly existing in Buddhism. But all these three different traditions were put, you know, the, included under the broad concept of Buddhism subsequently. Do you see that point? So even in a sense we can say Buddhism is a cre creation by, um, you know, the British or the modern scholarship. But it is somewhat different from Hinduism because actually there was no such thing called, uh, you know, the Hinduism or one belief. But in Buddhism we can say that there were three different traditions. But then again in the three different traditions there were interactions. We know stories about Chinese travelers who came from China to India to Sri Lanka. So, you know, they took text and you know they took text from India and then they translated them into Chinese. So Buddhist world was much more connected. Okay? It's a good thing to study about the Buddhist world. Actually Buddhist world uh, at different periods is different. You know the concept of Buddhist world the, 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 the world, the countries where Buddha Sasana existed is different. In Sri Lankan history, we have a story of a bhikkhuni who is taking bhikkhuni Sasana to the China. So you can see that, you know, the interactions were there. So when we talk Buddhism, Buddhism is also, what is the concept of Buddhist world? Buddhist world can be different in many different times. In Ashoka's time, Buddhist world is one. In, uh, say, after uh, several centuries, in the 10th and 11th centuries, Theravada Buddhist world is one. It started belonging Southeast Asia. You see? So uh, the very concept of Buddhist world can be different from uh, time to time. Now, today, if you take the Buddhist world, we can talk about the traditional Buddhist world, and at the same time, Mm, non-traditional Buddhist world where Buddhism has gone recently. So like that. So these concepts we have to be, uh, you know, the, we have to see clearly. Uh, some of these concepts have been created anew, more recently. And then uh, sometimes we tend to think that there was something called Hinduism during the time of the Buddha. No, it is not like that. But there were some beliefs, some practices uh, belonging to, you know, based on, you know, certain uh, text and explanations and things like that. So this is how it happened. So basically when we, when we look at uh, religions, we have to be very careful about it because uh, even when we, you know, the put a seal or name to these things, we are really imposing something not historically existing, okay? So the, the, the stories uh, of Hinduism is, you know, something like that. Uh, but the commonality of these things is, you know, they all uh, had, you know, some idea of God. 
But what we call today Hinduism, Advaita Vedanta is also coming under that. But of course that is non-theistic uh, system. So again you can see that you know the boundaries are kind of uh, getting blurred. Boundaries are getting blurred because you know on the one hand Hinduism is a theistic religion. Within <coughs> Hinduism, <coughs> sorry, you find uh, non-theistic uh, aspects also, okay? So uh, this is how it uh, basically, uh, theistic religions and non-theistic religions. So when we call something a theistic religion, uh, it means that it believes in uh, creator God. Isaro Kattani Mata. Now, if you look at all these theistic religions, we can see that uh, they believe in the Creator God. And the non theistic religious traditions don't believe in the Creator God. Okay? Uh, we will take a short break here, but do you have any questions or anything on the things I said up to this point? Or we will leave questions to the end. Uh, we will take. Uh, Two means break, yeah. yeah. Okay.